have the I have the joyful uh, session now post lunch when you're all kind of nicely filled and um, so I'm glad the air conditioning is still to cool so that should keep us awake. Um, just to introduce myself, I, I, David Creed is my name, I'm the Prevention Coordinator uh, with the North Dublin Region Drug and Alcohol Task Force that I hope to change the name fairly soon because that's a mouthful. Um, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a lecturer, I'm not a public speaker as, as such, um, um, I'm not an academic. Um, uh, my, my manager would really love to be uh, precise, exact in what I say so that there's no ambiguity in it uh, and naturally I'm a storyteller. Um, so I have my notes because I'm at, at high risk of wandering down rabbit holes all over the place. Uh, so I just have to try and keep a hold of myself. Um, from a point of view of background, uh, as in, uh, most of it of what I'm about is, 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 a, is practice, frontline practice. I've managed services uh, in youth and family support and mental health uh, over a number of years. Um, uh, I stay near close to the front line uh, because I suppose uh, I, uh, I like the front line because to, to me the front line is where is where uh, is is where the life is. Um, I have no big qualifications, and I, I suppose I describe myself a little bit like uh, youth workers might have done twenty years ago, where uh, the definition of a youth worker twenty years or twenty five years ago was that we are the willing, led by the unknowing, doing the impossible for the ungrateful, and we've <laughs> and we have done so much for so long with so little that we can now do anything with nothing. Uh, <laughs> So, so that's where I'm coming from, and that's what I, that's kind of where we're at. So, uh, I'm going to present broadly what the, um, uh, the 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 strategy, the prevention strategy in North Dublin is. Um, I had a bit of a chicken and egg situation with me earlier when I was doing this. Uh, should I start with the structure, or should I start with what inspires people? Uh, you can make up your minds as you go along, which I did. Um, so, what I'm going to do is is um, kind of focus on what our strategy is about. Is uh, focusing on uh, modifiable risks uh, and protective factors, so what we can change and nuance of those. Uh, it is data informed, and I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, it's a recognition that community is um, uh, central to what we do. Uh, everybody has a place to part in prevention and everybody needs to be able to kind of uh, exercise that part. Uh, and then the other piece is uh, the importance of involving uh, decision opinion policy makers uh, uh, just to make sure that it actually it works, it has influence where it needs to have influence, uh, and that it, per uh, it permeates down to uh, practice on the ground. So the structures we have try to support that to happen. Uh, and then the last piece of it that is is a uh, um, uh, that each each organisation and participant uh, they have a specific remit. So it's not that we become all things to all people, uh, but we stay in our own lane, but it's working together then, each one on its own remit, um, that actually uh, makes the plan work. So that's broadly kind of uh, uh, what we're going to look at. Okay, uh, so these are the bodies. Um, who are the people in my neighbourhood? Here they are. Uh, so we have two kind of uh, um, layers of, of the, the core structure. So this is um, uh, the first one, and if you can see, and it's very obvious, um, uh, oversight committee uh, made up of the, the, the chair is, is uh, E2B senior uh, youth officer assigned me, he's actually here today. Um, then there's Breed and myself, so the, the coordinator of the task force and myself as, as a prevention coordinator, uh, adolescent psychiatrist uh, by four, so again in their own experience bringing their own expertise to that and the insight into addiction and what's involved. Uh, the researchers and then broad dec decision makers uh, including the Minister for Rural Development uh, leader partnerships, uh, HSE, Health and Wellbeing, uh, SIPSI Coordinator, Fingal County Council, uh, the Youth Education, the Specialist Groups, um, uh, NGOs, Jigsaw, LGBTQ plus groups, all of those that influence policy at one level, but so many of them have a practice on the other side. Uh, so it's, it's really important, and what you, what you notice as I go through this, uh, there's an awful lot of what we, the, the approach is, is around conversation. So where are the conversations happening? Who's in the conversation? Why are they in the conversation? And what do we hope to achieve out of that conversation? Uh, so that's really a, a big piece, if, I suppose, in what we're doing. So they're the people at the, at the, that, the first level of it. Uh, then below that, we have uh, two strategy groups. Um, and we have two rather than one because uh, the nature of uh, the suggestion of actions uh, that come out of the research uh, they're captured broadly under those two uh, categories. And why they're there is, if you look at um, the community one, for instance, all of the organisations there, they have their own remit. They're all involved in uh, youth work, community development, 
uh, in particular aspects of the sports, developing sports and the interest uh, in, in, in keeping young people involved in sports right through the teenage years. So their focus is, is, um, is sport. The health promotion is the broad health uh, promotion uh, stuff that goes on there. Uh, healthy Fingal, I'll come back to a piece in relation to that in a minute. So what their involvement in the, uh, the prevention strategy is that they look at the work they already do through the lens in particular of the Planet Youth data, which is the local data that we've collected. Uh, and we're at the second round of that and we've just completed uh, the second round of that. So I look uh, uh, remarkably refreshed for somebody who has had to spend the last number of weeks frazzled trying to get schools to complete the thing. Um, but uh, uh, we're there. So we, we, we're currently working off of the 2021 data and we will have that one uh, early in the new year ready to go. But it's that lens. And one of the words that I keep coming back to uh, that uh, came up at one of the conferences in Reykjavik is a thing of intention. So looking at the, um, the community group there, uh, they do their own work. And a lot of it is about uh, developing communities, getting people involved in sports or whatever it is. But the additional lens of looking through uh, the, the prevention data, that data comes back from the Planet U data set, is the thing of intention. And to look at the work from a point of view of, is this building the environment in which young people live uh, and grow up? Is it a positive influence? Is it building protective factors? Uh, and, or is it addressing risk factors? And oftentimes, and certainly in a conversation I had with the, um, uh, the, the manager of the sports uh, partnership uh, a couple of years ago, when we started out on this, they didn't see what they were doing had any impact other than encouraging young people to continue to be involved in sports because of the physical benefits uh, for, their, for their health. They didn't see the broader health benefits, so from their mental health, from a point of view of prevention work, and from a point of view of the, the, that protective factor. So it's changing that lens is the intention or the intent that we are doing this in order to improve the health and life outcomes for young people. That's what we're about. Okay. So I mentioned there about, uh, um, uh, oh sorry, well, this, I'm not talking about the, these health and well-being, I didn't give them any chance, but um, it's obviously the same, it's the same thing. Uh, they have their own remit, they have their own work, they have their own focus. Uh, but by uh, uh, looking at it through the lens of the, the Planet Youth data and how we can affect the change in the environment, uh, it changes the focus, it changes and hones the, um, the focus for the organisations and supports the interagency collaboration that I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, we mentioned about uh, evidence informed. Yes, it is evidence informed. Uh, the key piece of evidence that we are using at the moment is the Planet Youth data set because it is uh, localised, it is immediate, uh, it is uh, current, it's real time. Uh, I want, there's no need to me repeating. The people this morning have done that work for me. You know the domains uh, that it, it covers. You know the broad sweep of it. You know the themes that are picked up in it. So it's wide ranging and it covers a range of things. So it's a really important piece that everything can hook onto. And it's what draws in uh, the stakeholders that I showed that, that are involved with us. That's a really important piece in it. But we also look, cross-reference what's being said uh, through SBAD, HRB, uh, what uh, RCPR, RCIA are saying, what's going on in the research, what's going on in Europe, what's going on under EUPC as well. So what are the others saying? What is the research that they're doing? Are, can we cross-reference other common themes? So it's important that what we do is data-based uh, and evidence-based. So we're, we're kind of, we're not making this up as according as we go along. It is solid evidence. So we can stand over it. We can stand over what we're looking for as well from what the data is telling us. Okay, um, to, to talk about interracial collaboration, this is, where, this is where I was kind of have a chicken in it. Um, uh, two things uh, that come to mind when I think of, of, of uh, uh, the Planet Youth process, uh, there are two um, uh, proverbs that come to mind. One is a shanakul and the other is a Chinese proverb. And the shanakul says, Iskaha keila awar nadini. Okay. It loosely translated, we, we, people live in each other's shade. And then the other one is, uh, the Chinese proverb is that um, uh, society thrives uh, when good people plant trees for shade that they will never sit in. Yeah? When I say that kind of stuff, uh, uh, 
um, some people kind of, uh, well, yeah, some in my circle, they say, oh, yeah, there's that washy kind of emotion, don't we just stop? Uh, and I'm, I'm kind of thinking, hold on a second, that, uh, uh, well, is it inspirational, motivational, is it the vision, uh, is it the energy? And I think that when people are motivated, inspired, and have that passion for what they're doing, uh, that's what creates the energy for the action. Uh, and I think we need to have it. And I think it's that balance between right and left brain thinking. Uh, that I think the modern world of where we are at the moment, it's very left brain thinking. It's the science, the evidence. Um, you know, can you evaluate that? Uh, can you prove it? Uh, and uh, sometimes when people think very much in that way, and it's really important, it's really important because it's what I said a minute ago, we're not making it up off the top of our heads. So we have to use the evidence base for uh, stuff, but on its own, I think it's, it's, it's two dimensional. That the right brain thinking, uh, it gives voice to uh, the creation, uh, or the, the, the um, the creative, the emotional, uh, the relational and the spiritual dimensions of life. Um, and that they're really, really important because in working those two in a balanced way, what we're getting is we're getting the solid evidence and we're getting the relationships that encourage the conversations. Because without the relationships, there is no conversation. And if we haven't that going on, the risk is that we take a really, really good evidence-based program and we run it somewhere and it has no context there is no conversation going on. So nobody has identified we need to do something in relation to the alcohol issue. We need to do something in relation to cannabis use. We need to do something in relation to uh, your mental health and well-being for it. So the, the conversation needs to be going on. Then if we're using our, our evidence informed, it makes sense and it gains traction and it becomes part of the conversation. So for me, it's a really, it's the, that balance piece. Uh, and to me, it's, it's also the piece that allows um, uh, the, inter, the inter, interagency collaboration to happen. Uh, because in that, while organisations and agencies can have it in their policies and can have it in their SOPs that we do interagency collaboration, uh, it, 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 that doesn't necessarily mean it happens. Uh, and I, I've had experience of where organisations say, oh yes, we collaborate with people. But it means is we're running this and other people help us. Uh, and I'm thinking, uh, I'm not sure that really is collaboration in the truest sense of it. So it's about, uh, very often it happens that, that it's the frontline people that know each other and they're, they're building relationships and it's those relationships enable that to happen in a real and meaningful way. I suppose one of the other things I think is really important in that is that um, uh, for, for families and, and communities and young people, if they see us working well together, it's kind of giving witness value to that, that listen, as we don't have all the answers, uh, or says we don't even have all the questions, but if we work together on it, uh, we'll get better health and life outcomes for young people. And that's, that's back again to my intention or intent notion. Uh, so that's kind of where, where we're coming in that. Um, I suppose what it does is, as well, it, it allows that kind of... Um, uh, it allows us to use the, the evidence informed stuff in a really good way uh, and it allows us to monitor and measure uh, what the outcomes possibly are. Uh, and um, I haven't been moving this quickly enough, but uh, you can see what I'm, uh, as, as I was speaking there, you see the, the, uh, the pieces moving on the side? Uh, it is the bearing out of what I said in that Shanokul Iskaha Kela Awar Nadini. Um, it's that interagency collaboration, uh, each one doing its piece, each one acknowledging the expertise, the skills, the knowledge um, that, that, and the resources that each one has, uh, staying in our own lane with that and working side by side, that we collective create one protective piece, uh, uh, one create, uh, collective shade uh, for the protection of young people um, and to ensure uh, kind of uh, the best health and life outcomes for young people. So to give a couple of practical um, kind of examples of that, I mentioned a minute ago about the community strategy, uh, and I mentioned that uh, Healthy Ireland are part of that group. Now, Healthy Ireland and Healthy Fingal have their own job. Uh, it's linked into uh, the national frameworks, uh, Healthy Ireland and Stone to Care, and no one being left behind, and um, uh, what's the other expression? Uh, every, make every, every contact count. So it's all that's going on, right? Um, uh, so they have their own piece of work in that. Um, but by their involvement in, uh, the, in, the, in the prevention strategy and looking at their work through uh, the lens of the, the Planet Youth data set, uh, it's able to see it differently and promote it differently. One of the things that they're involved in at the moment is um, a project called Inclusive U. 
And that's a, a project across Europe, uh, a number of European countries coming together uh, to look at volunteering in the community. And there were, it, it came out of the acknowledgement uh, that COVID, um, con it, it set back the entire uh, piece of volunteering, both volunteering for something or inv involved in an organisation or young people themselves engaging in the community. So they were looking at uh, how do we develop that? How can we encourage um, volunteering? The group was meeting in North County Dublin in August. So at one of the meetings where this came up, the conversation came up then around, was there anything uh, in the data set from Planet Youth in relation to COVID, the impact of it, uh, and the importance of volunteering? And I said, yes, there is. Uh, because we, the last uh, data survey was done, uh, just as we came out of COVID, we asked about the impact of COVID. And the impact of COVID was immense for young people. Uh, even if I, uh, off the top of my head, 46% of young people said that their mental health was worse or a lot worse uh, during COVID. Uh, their engagement in the community, it dropped. It dropped from, uh, um, well, it, it, in ordinary, it, the rest of the data suggested that about half of the young people are involved in uh, um, physical activity to the level that would be recommended, so even uh, kind of an hour, three times a week. Um, uh, so it, it dropped very, very low. So their engagement and their volunteering, their volunteering was actually 4% uh, of young people's volunteering. And I have said to young people afterwards that uh, in, a, in a TY programme, we come that in a minute, I'm down, I'm got down a rabbit hole, you didn't stop me. Um, uh, but one of, one of the things that, that uh, um, I have said to them about volunteering, just their volunteering, 4%, I've said to them, you're rotten, miserable, shower, you don't think I'm on yourselves, you don't volunteer at anything but a, a huge influence by, by COVID. So they were looking at that. So what could we do and how, how did that make any sense and what, what, do, what does it offer to it for them to be involved? So what we did was we put a small presentation together for that group and we presented the data and the impact that COVID had on young people, the impact it had on their engagement in the community. Uh, and also we, we kind of leaned on uh, the piece that was mentioned this morning in relation to the importance of uh, parents and adults as a protective factor. So parents and adults are primarily the ones who are the volunteers in the sports and the, the arts drama and so on. They're there because their children are involved in it. Uh, so there's your cohort of volunteers. So putting those two, pe those two pieces together and acknowledging the importance, uh, the protective factor of the adults, uh, plus the importance of the pro-social activity uh, and engagement in the community that, that we know that that is as a strong protective factor. We presented that and the process of the Planet Youth, uh, the process of engaging people is an additional lens that they're going away with now and they're looking at it again back to the same thing of the intent or the intention. So it's not just volunteering for volunteering's sake, it's looking at the volunteering going towards uh, enhancing the community in which the young people live and grow up uh, and building the protective factors for them in that, that affects uh, and enhances uh, life outcomes for young people. Uh, okay, one of the other pieces, that just to, again to highlight a kind of an example of interagency collaboration. Um, uh, our friends in uh, Tusla, uh, they run the, the family support service in the area, the family support network in the area. And through conversations in the, at their meetings, they were identifying that uh, children as young as eight and nine were having access to vapes and the vaping uh, and all the concerns in relation to vaping, uh, to the nicotine content and the developing brain and all that went with that. Uh, so again, uh, uh, Nuala is a person then that's in charge in the, in the North County Dublin. She didn't take it on herself. She's aware of the plan due data. She's aware of, of the, the, um, the uh, strategy groups. Uh, so she linked in uh, with those and said, is there information in that? Was there data collected uh, around vaping and other substances? And what are the trends? Uh, and the, a group was, was convened that she brought together. Uh, it was all the key stakeholders again, uh, Tusla, Feroiga, Ashton Family Resource Centre, the HSC promotion, uh, in particular, uh, the tobacco cessation team and the drugs task force. Uh, and we came up with what you can see on the screen there. There was a, um, an information uh, brochure uh, created uh, on the three top um, uh, trending substances, if you like, that young people are going to encounter uh, in the early teen years. So we looked at uh, the vaping, the nitrous oxide and, and uh, cannabis. Uh, so they're the top three. There was a big concern in our, in our area, what is like in other areas, but certainly in the North Dublin area, uh, the nitrous oxide is as big as the, the vaping uh, from point of view of concern. Uh, so that was translated into a number of languages, uh, the key languages that, uh, for the people that are uh, in the very diverse community that North County Dublin is. So it, it was made available and through the schools. Um, 
And the second piece that we did was uh, a PowerPoint uh, presentation was created on it and we ran six in-person workshops for the parents of uh, the fourth to sixth class in the primary school. Uh, just that they were aware and they had a knowledge of uh, what are the risks, what are the uh, risk factors involved in that, uh, what are the risks in, associated with each of those substances, um, what are the protective factors, how to protect their young people, how to talk to their young people about uh, substance use and alcohol use, and where supports were available in the local area. Uh, so that's, that was a kind of came out of that, but it was only possible um, because of that consciousness uh, of that thing, again, the intention and the intent, what are we at? We're trying to build the protective factors, we're trying to mitigate against the risk factors. Uh, so that was a very successful piece and we finished online for, for people that wouldn't have been able to come out in the evening. Uh, so we ran it online and there, there was a good number turned up online, so we're quite happy. Very different experience to do it online for us as well because you're, it's much more didactic in how you uh, present it. Uh, but very useful uh, and then the outcomes for, for young people can be kind of assured at least it's going in the right direction and the conversations. Okay. Um, I, I mentioned at the beginning, I'm talking about you know, conversations and the remit of, of uh, different people at different levels. Um, so a concern we had was, it was how do we engage parents in the conversation? Uh, so what we did in relation to that was, um, hello, this doesn't want to move on. It's kind of strike now. Could be my uh, dodgy laptop. You might have to close it and open it again. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. Sorry. I'll try that. Let's try. Okay, we're Is that back, okay? In business. back in business. Okay. Right now, so. Ripping up the last yeah. Yes, yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. Okay, we're back in business. Um, that was almost like a RT in days gone by. Do not adjust your set. Um, okay. <laughs> Uh, so here we are. Um, uh, what we did was we, we took the core, the core themes uh, that uh, identify risk and protective factors in the Planet U data uh, and we developed a resource for parents in relation to it. We were very adamant this is not a booklet, okay? It's not a booklet because the booklet suggests this is done, it's finished, it's a definitive article. This is a resource. Uh, so it is a moving, changing re resource that we can add to uh, every time we do a, um, a new round of data collection. We're looking at the themes. If the, um, the, the stats change, if the, the priorities change, we can change this and to, li to live in it. Um, and what it does is, is that, that uh, we gave some of, the, 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 some of the, the figures to the parents in relation to the, the, uh, the main themes. Uh, now, they were covered uh, this morning. People, so the uh, sleep, the screen time, uh, the, the alcohol consumption, the binge drinking, uh, the mental health stuff, uh, the suicide ideation that was mentioned this morning, that was shocking uh, in ours and I think uh, again hugely influenced by, by, by COVID and isolation with young people. Uh, but we presented it as was, but in each case uh, what we also did was uh, we linked the evidence informed research uh, resources and information, we linked it through uh, the QR codes that have gone too fast now, can I see uh, there? Um, uh, there are QR codes linking that, so if parents have a concern in any one particular area, they can scan on the codes and they're brought to that evidence-informed research that we, that we have uh, identified and can stand over. Uh, yes, this is one that we can point you to and it's really important. Um, where we go to in this now is, is that uh, in North Dublin, uh, we, we love a good acronym. Uh, so we're at the pen at the moment for this, uh, and the pen is Parent Engagement Network. Um, what exactly that will look like, I have no idea. I have an acronym, but I'm not sure really uh, what it might look like yet. What we have done is we have had conversations with parents' associations. And what we'd like parents' associations to do is uh, have a look at this. This is on our website. Schools got it electronically. Hard copies were sent out to schools. Uh, so they have it in a, in a number of, of uh, uh, from a, in a number of sources. Um, uh, and the idea is that if we can get parents to talk to each other in relation to what's going on there, uh, that they might identify particular themes that they might like to follow up on, might like to follow uh, other work on, uh, and that we might be able to facilitate th some of those conversations. 
Um, down the line, we may, may look at other resources that will come online, depending on who's creating those. Anything coming out from the HSE uh, Health Promotion, we're looking at that as well. We're cross, cross-referencing all the ways along the line. Um, so if anything comes out, that's the idea, is we can get parents together uh, in some sort of a, a network that they are speaking to each other uh, about these core issues, uh, about seeing themselves as the protective factor that they are, uh, and building on that. So that's what we're doing in relation to that. One of the other pieces, um, uh, and I think um, I was talking to, to Marianne there at lunchtime, and she had to steal me thunder, but anyway, here we go. Uh, one of the concerns we had in this is, is about young people. Uh, that young people, uh, they gave us um, uh, a snapshot into their lives in a particular point in time through completing the survey. Uh, I've had a number of conversations uh, going around the schools with young people. How did that land with them? How did they feel about doing it? How did they feel about the questions? Uh, did any of the questions trigger them? Were they upset by it? Um, so uh, it's really important that uh, I suppose that we continue to engage young people in that process. Uh, by and large, I found that uh, young people weren't. Uh, in some cases where we had schools that, that uh, were reluctant to participate the first time around, some of their concerns was, you can't ask young people those questions. They're too far reaching, that's, that's too personal. Uh, you can't ask young people about uh, their home life or what's going on in the family, even though they knew this is a completely anonymous survey, there's no way of tracing back to any individual or any family. And we had schools that didn't facilitate the data collection out of the fear of the kickback, uh, and out of fear that parents would be ringing up, giving out, that what we asking my child that question for? We had another school that didn't participate in the first time uh, and their concern was, I think, that they were, they were expecting a tsunami of self-disclosures in relation to mental health uh, that they wouldn't be able to cope with. So it, that was the reality that we were looking at and I think it's really interesting because if you talk to young people, it's very, very different. Uh, the young people are talking amongst themselves about so much of what we ask them about. Uh, so for, for us to ask them uh, is... is um, it's, it's asking to, to share what is their lives and what is their experience. Uh, and I, I think it, it, it always puts us in a very uh, privileged position uh, if young people, if they speak to us uh, either individually uh, or if they share their life with us in that, it, it is really, it's a privileged position for us to be in. And it's really important that we do something uh, with that data and they know that we're doing something with the data. Uh, one of the things that I, that, I, that I spoke to Marianne about was that um, she used the expression young people are experts in their own lives. Um, uh, this here is showing a TY programme. This is what we did to engage young people in the process and to continue to engage them in it. Uh, we devised this TY programme. Uh, in the, the development of that, in talking to young people about the, the, uh, some of the data findings, um, I, I said to young people about them being uh, experts in their own lives. And I asked them if they had ever been told that. Did, had they ever heard that? Or, so they hadn't. And I, I spoke to two or three different groups. So I was wondering afterwards, is that something that we as adults say because it makes us look, you know, slay and down with the kids? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, and when I say that, um, I love doing that with young people because when, when they're laughing, I say, I, I, I then follow it up and say, yeah, that should be a criminal offence for <laughs> someone of my vintage to be saying slay, and I'm only saying that because my daughter says it all the time to me. Um, uh, so, um, uh, but it is, it's not, it's, not, it's not my experience. And if they are experts in their own lives, and we've asked them to share this uh, information and these, this detail with us, they need to know we're doing something with it. And they need to continue to engage in it. And part of me was there's two sides of that. Um, if we ask them about all these issues and concerns, and if we're saying it's about advising uh, what the statutory and voluntary agencies do in order to improve uh, the environment that affects their health and life outcomes, they can sit on their hands and say, "Want so, you fix it. Uh, they have a responsibility themselves because they are actuators in their own lives. If they're experts in their own lives, they didn't get to that expertise by sitting on their hands. They got to that expertise because they are living it. Uh, one of the things I really love to say to young people in that as well is that, uh, that from a point of view of what's going on for them, uh, the who am I in myself, who is it good for me to be around, who's my, who's my pack, uh, and uh, am I future looking? I say to them, I'm sorry folks, that's not unique to you. Every generation, include dinosaurs like me, we have all, of, all done that. The only thing that is unique to you is the environment in which you're doing it. So they, they, so, and that's, that, that's what makes them the, the experts in their own lives. 
Uh, we don't involve them in um, the oversight committee. We don't involve them uh, in the, um, uh, st the strategy groups. And the reason we don't is that very risk that was pointed out this morning. It risks tokenism. Uh, we can't assume that young people there uh, are connected in any way to groups of young people where they can go forward and back to say, am I representing you accurately? Is that okay? Uh, is what's going on here? Is that kind of reflecting what you said earlier? Uh, we can't assume they have that forum. Now we do have Corla and Oga and those and we can link in with those. They are kind of a forum uh, that can do that sort of thing, but we can't assume uh, that it speaks to uh, the broad range of young people. So as part of the plan to do the, the, the TY program, we gather young people together to look at the, the uh, findings in the data get their feedback from it uh, and see is it accurate. The programme itself then what it does is uh, it's done in clusters. We're lucky in the North Dublin area it is a manageable cluster area uh, so we divide the, the schools into three clusters uh, and the first and sixth session of this, the six sessions are done in cluster. The first one we present them with uh, the, the, uh, the key components of critical thinking uh, and we want them to go away uh, thinking in research terms, prove it uh, how do you know that? Um, how do I know that's true? How do I know? It? Is there evidence in relation to that? And track the source. That's what we want them to do. And the example I always give is that um, you need to know anything you hear, anything, any information that you get. Uh, can you? Can the person presenting that show you the evidence? Can you? Can they show you the research? Can they show you the scientific background to that? Or is it some fella in his jammies on the computer talking off the top of his head? Uh, and if that's what you're finding, we'll leave from there because you know, that means nothing. Uh, so track the source. Uh, and the second piece then is we, get, we go through the, the smart planning tool as a way for them to hone down uh, what they want to do. Uh, and the idea is they pick one of the themes from the data research uh, and they are to do one action in their school, just one. Uh, and I don't mind, it's entirely up to them then what that action is and how they do it. So it is led and driven by the young people. Session six, they come back and they present it to each other. Uh, so they, they're learning from each other of what each presented. As part of that process as well, it, uh, and it's part to show that the young people, that this, this um, the, the Planet Youth uh, data collection, that we that, that information we have, it's not just kind of um, uh, sitting on a shelf somewhere, that the community and there are others concerned about it. Uh, we have a number of community groups around the area uh, that are focusing on substance, substance use and mental health. Uh, and the young people go out to their own local soft group uh, and they present their, their action to them as well. So they, it's showing them that, that this, the community is concerned about this as well uh, and this has gone beyond the school. It's not a school's project. Uh, the schools that participated last year, they covered the, the wider, a whole range of stuff and they were absolutely incredible. They were fantastic. Uh, they were certainly way beyond any of our expectation. Uh, and one of the schools uh, entered the project into the, the Garda Youth Awards and they won the group category. So obviously the young people did an incredible job. So um, yeah, uh, back to what uh, Marianne said. Yes, uh, we need to be involving our young people in the process. We need to be talking about them. They are experts in their own lives and we need to be hearing what they're saying. Uh, so you'll notice in all of what I've said to you along the, the line, uh, it's all about um, uh, conversations. And it's, it's the conversations uh, by the relevant people at the relevant uh, level. So some of the conversations it will influence policy, some of the conversations are how can we do this better from a point of view of interagency inter collaboration, how can we respond to it. The conversation with parents then is how can we as parents use that information and data uh, to support how we're parenting our children and how we are building the protective factor and then it's it's almost going full circle then to engage the young people in it because this is their data they shared it with us uh, so it's only right and proper that they have a, a continued involvement in it uh, and they do it uh, through this um so just to conclude i'm way of, i'm flying am i uh, i'm i'm done am i i did, sorry i didn't care you notice you and you're you're like you're just <laughs> Okay, I think I'm more or less there. The conversation is for everyone. Everyone has a part of the evidence involved. Using the real-time data uh, to build the relationships uh, across the community uh, with services and, and families together, all working together, uh, enables the best use of all of the evidence, uh, uh, um, the resources, the information, the programmes, the workshops. It's using it uh, intelligently and it's using it uh, in the same conversation. Uh, and it all is going towards better health and life outcomes uh, for young people. QED.